Hello. Greet you. Peace. Good morning, Jesus Christ. Uh, it's really good to be back. It's great to say uh, it's not too much of fun sitting in front of the camera and trying to preach and connect with people that you can't see. Uh, and Sometimes the devil just throws in this image of actually I'm just talking to my tablet and there's nobody out there. <laughs> but thank you for staying faithful. I know you have all been uh, tuning in on Sunday mornings and we really appreciate that. Also, thank you for staying with all the steps and measures that you had to take. I just want to stress how important the face masks are because I came across this uh, example that okay. in a US city it opened up, they had two hairdressers who uh, had COVID and so they had to contact face backwards, right? Because for the two weeks before they were ill, they were uh, contagious. And they had serviced 144 customers in freedom over two weeks. But you know what? Not a single customer contacted COVID. And the reason was both the hairdresser and the customers had masks on. And it's quite an extreme example because hairdressing, as the ladies will know, is close contact. You know, they're just arms length away, and usually the hairdresser will be talking and speaking down on you. And the contact over a period of time, like, okay, for a guy, maybe 20 minutes, but for a lady, an hour or two, or, uh, I don't know what it is, three, my wife says. Uh, so it's a long period of contact, uh, and yet 144 customers with two contagious uh, service providers, nobody contacted. So this Take that with you uh, when you're outside, not for not much later, as far as possible, of course, I think you think you can't, but other than that, you need your mask on, which is what I'm So, join me in the word of prayer, let's sit down with God. Loving Father, we thank you for just keep keeping us together over the last three months. But it's so good to be back here. Pray that you want to say from the section uh, as we come together here and then this first line go home. You know that you continue to watch over us. So now open your word to us that it may speak to our hearts, our minds, and most importantly, bring change to our lives. So we open ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. As we have done online, we have been looking at the book of Philippians, Paul's letter to the Philippians. And to quickly reiterate, it's a long letter. Because in the other letters that Paul wrote, there was always something to correct. There was an issue uh, in that community. There were problems there. The letter was sort of like direction. You've got to get this right. Stop doing that. But Philippians was just a pure expression of love. He's sitting there in jail, and he's trying to comfort himself, and he says, what should I think of, I suppose? And this is my, my own interpretation. You know, sometimes when you're down, you don't want to think of more depressing things. You don't want to think of the people who are giving you problems. So you think of the nice people. I think I've mentioned that one of the seven. So what are the nice things that we can fill our hearts and minds with? That the Philippian church was one of those things that Paul could dwell on. He was really happy. He starts off by saying, I thank God every time I think of you. In all of my prayers, I rejoice and it brings joy to the son. So, I would like to say that in my own time, uh, during lockdown, and, and I would think of things to encourage myself, I thought of you. Seriously. So many of you. Ruby and Dewey and David and family, Greg, Ashley, Muriati, Andrew, Andrew. All of you, actually, well, I feel it's more like a 
Indian drink, very fun and other. And I am convinced of one thing though, although we've had three months of online uh, messaging, the, the, the church cannot be virtual. There's no such thing as a virtual church. There's nothing like coming together physically being uh, in, in one another's company, right? The wonder is this the body of Christ. We can't really be separate, separated. And it proximity comes to so much. But we've had three months, actually. Quite amazing. And I want to begin by asking you to fill in a statement. If I start off by saying, um, when my life is interrupted, I will respond by fill in the blank. How do you respond to interruption in your life? When my life is interrupted, I... If you're anything like me, I, I think the tendency is to feel annoying, right? Uh, there, there are times uh, during the lockdown and uh, I've been working on something and then you hear this outside of the gate, and the delivery guy has come out, and then you've got a, and then it says, oh, see what it is there, yeah. and it's all that stuff, and she's all right, and it's like, oh, oh, oh. so yeah. put on the mask, and then run out, and collect the stuff, and, and then you just get back here, and it's like, and another guy is delivering stuff, what in the world are you ordering this? <laughs> Uh, you have these interruptions, so, so you get frustrated, you, you, you get annoyed, and you tend to want to complain, right? But then there's no one to complain to, if you're only in the night. That's what it says. What? So you, you get a bit frustrated there, and that will be quite normal. There's people all over the house still, it's probably not a good idea. But, no, no. Yeah, scripture challenges us differently. Yeah. It will be fair to say that over the last two weeks, a lot of things have been disrupted, right? Our, the schedules that we're used to, the things that we have become normal and regular in our lives, and oh, we can't do this, we can't do that. How do I, you know, I think the first thing is the lockdown that was something I needed for, for my computer and all the computer shops are shut down. <laughs> You're thinking like, what in the world is going on? How am I supposed to run my computer? Uh, why, why, why are all the computer shops shut down? Everybody is locked in. We can't get computer parts. What's going to happen? And, and so there's all this frustration. Uh, I remember saying on the first Sunday after 9-11, that's some time ago, almost 20 years ago, I had the chance to speak right Sunday after 9 11. And I remember telling the congregation the world as we know it is never going to be the same again. And it hasn't. Air travel uh, completely changed after 9 11. Our sense of security and safety has never returned to what it was before 9 11. And so I think I had the opportunity and you know, remember that first Sunday after lockdown. The pandemic isn't even over yet. But look, look at this setup. Life is not going to be the same. Uh, I, I've resolved in my mind that I have to wear a mask when I walk for the rest of my life. But there is disruption. And how do we respond to these life interruptions. What, how do you fill in that blank in my house? If my life is interrupted, I... Well, let's look at Philippians chapter 2. If you have it on your phone, so it's just uh, three verses. I can read it out for you. Philippians chapter 2, verses 14, 15, and 16. The Paul tells them, and this was a good church for you, but without problems, but he still says to them, do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without hope in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. 
among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of God. The first point I'd like to make this morning is that too often we complain when there are interruptions in our life. But I believe the scripture challenges us actually to look at interruptions, not as interruptions, but as opportunities. There are opportunities for us to do things differently, to do new things, and special opportunities to share the love of Jesus. How many of you during this year of lockdown have done things that you otherwise would not have done? Yes. I know I had to be a thing for a lot. a Singaporean thing. And I never thought the day would come, but a lot of my lockdown uh, is very good thing. Okay. Uh, so we try to cook Singaporean hawker food. And I had an opportunity to, to learn a lot. My, my daughter had subscribed to a, a Curiosity Stream, I think. It's a documentary channel. It's a small documentary. You can look under history, science, physics, whatever you want. There will be documentaries on it. So I had a great time. To, uh, opportunity just to learn and, and explore the universe and do all kinds of new things. I mean, I got to know my neighbors a lot better. Because usually I walk, but my neighbors don't. <laughs> and I think because of the lockdown, everybody in the neighborhood couldn't go out, and then, so they come out for a walk. And, and uh, four or five families to walk every evening across each other and, and had the chance to speak with some of them and get to know them. So it's very easy for us to just be forced with complaints. But I think here we, we see that when there are interruptions, God may be introducing something new to our lives. And as I said, the pandemic isn't over yet. It may go on for, for some period of time. It may be like a roller coaster. There may be periods of fear, but nobody can guarantee it. There may be a spike, and then suddenly certain things have to be closed. We, we don't know yet. But we should mentally prepare ourselves for that. And let's say now we think we are a trajectory, things are open up, we can come back to church, uh, we can go for lunch in Central, and then uh, addresses that open back up and so forth. But what if next week it shuts down again? What if this spike is worse than it was before? And you, you can't even leave your home. Why is there's an all day curfew because it's so severe? These things are not impossible. Of course, we don't want them to happen. But what if they do? How do we face these challenges that happen in our life? And it's not necessarily just community challenges, right? I can think of certain people who, who suddenly they have a stroke or a heart attack or, or, or something happens in their life and the whole uh, routine is disrupted. So here we have in scripture the, the encouragement that life is going to have interruptions. That's the reality. We don't like it. I want to happen. Who can, of us here can guarantee that for the remainder of our life everything will go according to plan? That will be a bold and quite baseless guarantee, right? Or even desire. So maybe it's better if we just mentally prepare ourselves and say, life is full of disruption. We live in a fallen world. Scripture tells us there will always be thorn and thistle. The ground will not yield its fruit to you without sweat. There will always be struggle. Every time you want to plant a nice bed of crop or something, there's going to be weeds growing in there. There's going to be thorns. It's going to have problems business and your family and whatever. So maybe we reorient it and say, okay, 
children come later on. But he, he stops everything. This is very easy. He just stops and he says, no. Don't stop the children from coming. Because the such belongs to the kingdom of heaven. And what was he doing there? He was making use of a disruption to illustrate further the kingdom of God. Right? He didn't say, what's wrong with you guys? Why are you so insensitive? You know, your parents should know better what kind of example are you sending to your children. He doesn't do that. He says, no. <laughs> yes, we have an agenda. We have things to say. But there is life in it. There are oh, relationships. And we see the kingdom of heaven in the destruction. Do we see irritating little children coming to disrupt this message? Or does he say, hang on, this is a lie illustration? Maybe it was his way of saying, God has got 50 million gazillion things to attend to. But here's how prayer. Think about that. Don't you think that every time you pray, it's not a disruption to God? And then you're praying about God, give me a car park? Lord, bring out the car so my son, my car doesn't make it the sun today? Oh Lord, I forgot my handphone. <laughs> How does the Lord do things for that? But we have this five illustration that Jesus is not. To these belong to the kingdom. God doesn't see it as a disruption. Jesus in his years in his life. He saw it as an opportunity. So I encourage you, in, in the weeks that we have, in the days that we have ahead, there will be challenges. There will appear to be this something, but maybe be transformed by the reviewing of your mind and your attitude. And the next time something comes, say, hang on, Lord, what is the opportunity rather than Lord, please take away this disruption from me so I can carry on with my journey. Let me just point out that there is a place for complaint. Okay? Sometimes I'm contradicting myself. If the, you know, uh, autocratic rulers or, or pastors or churches might say, okay, is this scripture? It says, don't complain, don't dispute. So whatever I say, you just follow, okay? Whatever David and I say, you just follow. So if we say that from now on, we're going to meet here, we're going to meet here. If we, if we say, uh, every chair is going to face the wall, then face the wall. Don't complain, don't dispute it. I think systems get refined because they are complex. The people challenge the system. Someone comes up and says, Pastor, can you do this differently? And many times we have had that kind of feedback. And we thought about it. Yes, it's a good suggestion. So I want to say to you, please don't read this as us saying, oh God, we don't want to hear any complaints. But what is the difference? And I think this is very important. The difference between a complaint and constructive feedback is that the constructive feedback has a solution at the end of it. The difference between a complaint and constructive feedback is that constructive feedback has a solution at the end of it. Does that make sense to you? Don't just complain. And just come up and say, ah, oh, it's so hot in here. And think about it. Then we turn the aircon on higher. But if we had a big crowd and we only have three air conditions, and we have an unusual situation where, say, there are 300 people in this room, it's going to be hotter than it's usual. Right? You can think through that and say there's actually no solution. On that particular Sunday, we got three people in here, we are not going to get the air cons to blow any more. So if there's no solution, then that's okay. You're just making your frustration back. Right? Nothing to be done. So that's how I, I used to encourage my, my daughter. I said, if you come up with something you're unhappy with, 
think about how we can improve a situation. Think about how we can con contribute to something. But we can bring feedback, and, and I said we welcome feedback. Uh, right now, we, we see in so many cities across the world, there are protests, <laughs> there are demonstrations. What are protests and demonstrations? They're complaints, I think. There's dissatisfaction that things aren't working, that things aren't meeting their expectations, things are going a certain way that they shouldn't. It's a complaint. But your country, Greg, David, your first amendment, the very first one, that you have a right to free speech, which includes complaint. Uh, and, and we don't see that in the history, the evolution of society, uh, that protests and demonstrations do bring about change. And not always, but over a period of time, you can face back to these landmark protests that have brought about change. But I think, as I said, the, the protest needs to be constructive. It needs to have an agenda. These are the things we propose. These are the things if you do, we can do these things too. Right? It, it's different from just the anger. It's just the frustration. The authorities are bad. The police are bad. The police are bad. The police are bad. The police are bad. That doesn't improve the situation. It makes it worse. Right? So I think the word is constructive. We are challenged as Christians to be constructive. How do we make a place better? In, in our time here, it's, it's expected in Thailand. Are we leaving our society? Okay, never mind that we're leaving our, our community. Places of work. Are we making it a little better? Are people saying, oh, thank God that we lived in this moment, everything over here, our friend was here, and we really appreciated it. They came and they contributed and they were concerned about it. This would be that shining light that Paul speaks about. So, this is the challenge that we have, and I want to encourage you to think about this. How we can be different. Uh, share the light of Christ. I, I remember maybe two or three years ago uh, trying to board a plane at Changi Airport, Singapore International Airport. There was this lady making a real fuss about all the security things. Because, you know, when you come in, when you enter immigration, you have a security check. But in Singapore, before you get into the gate or for your particular plan. There's another full security check. Whereas in some airports, you just do the first one when you get into the airport, then there's no longer any check to get to the gate. So Singapore has two checks. So she was complaining. She was really going at it. I this is the city system. What a lousy airport. This is the worst airport in the world. And so many times I have to take off everything. She was just uh, speaking at the top of her voice. And, and somebody responded by saying, um, you know, if you think Changi Airport is the worst airport in the world, you obviously haven't traveled very much, or you're quite stupid. Now, then she got more upset. You can see her face getting more red, and her husband starts to go ahead. You want to get up by one? And how many airports have you got? So there was a fight building up. But there was a gentleman there, and he just came between them, and he says, Excuse me, man. We are doing this for our good. Would you like to get on the plane and find that there is somebody aboard who came aboard with a weapon because they didn't check, and then he's holding you as a hostage? Would you like that? They're doing this for us. And wow, you could just feel the tension just completely recede. It just dropped right down. 
Was ist da jetzt vor? ที่ไหนคุมออกยืมมานี่ใช่ชื่อว่าไม่ต้องไม้ไปยุดๆที่นี่โลกไม่ไม่ไม่ไม้ที่ลังคาโอเคโซเช่นเช่นที่นี่
So, but Tom, Tom, can you go do me and I can look it up? Yes, I can do it. Yes, I can do it. Yeah, I think Korn Tom, Tom, he, my name, my name, hi, uh, South Kim. We had a good group here today, yeah, so yeah. Don't talk him. we'll let you go 